Hey y'all, welcome back. Hey y'all. <laughs> We've been doing uh, a lot of work on our travel videos that we're going to be bringing to you. You know, we've already seen a few from the big trip. We have a ton more to show you. That's, Absolutely. Man, what a great time. But we've also been wanting to do another cooking video. And today we had time to do that. So we thought we would just go ahead and bring it to you. This is one that Tom's been really excited about doing. Yeah. We cooked a brisket on the Green Mountain Grill. And I got to tell you, this is so easy, y'all. And so, you know, we're going to just bring you along, show you how easy it was to, uh, to cook this brisket and several side items, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Stacy did... Uh, some coleslaw and we did some some uh, pinto beans so you know stick around and we'll show you how we made all this come together and and uh your mouth your mouth might be watering after this one <laughs> really good stay tuned <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you how easy this is. We already got the smoker going, and when it when it starts up, it goes to 150 degrees, which I don't know if you can see that. It's at 150, and on my phone, I'm gonna go to the Green Mountain Grill um, app on my smartphone. I'm going to go ahead and connect, and when it connects, it says, okay, I'm already at 150, so right here, I'm going to set the temperature that I want to cook at, at 225 degrees. I confirm that, and now the grill is going to start working its way up to 225, and then when we get the meat on, I'm going to initially set it to 165. I'm going to cook the meat to 165, and for you major grillers out there, I'm going to cook fat side down. Now, I know a lot of people out there with the stick grills are going to say, fat side down. No, 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 you do fat side up. Most people do. But since the heat source on this is directly under, most people are saying, cook it fat side down. You have plenty of fat in a brisket to give you that good... Uh, tenderness and everything so I think it should be no problem um, so we're gonna cook fat side down we're gonna cook to 165 take it off wrap it then cook it to an internal temperature of 202 we're gonna let it rest a little bit and then cut it and we should have some good brisket so stay with us okay now we're just gonna season up our brisket and like a lot of the major uh, uh, pit masters in Texas, they just use salt and pepper. That's what we're gonna do, we're gonna make it easy. But you wanna start off with your salt. That needs to be your first layer.
All right, that's all it is. We're seasoned up. We're gonna go check our temperature on our uh, pit. If it's ready at 225, we're gonna put it on. Again, we're gonna put it on with the Green Mountain Grill, we're gonna do it fat side down. And and uh, so that's how we're gonna cook it. Initially, we're gonna cook it to 165. So let's go on out. Okay, we're to temperature now, 225. We're gonna put the uh, brisket on. Um, not covered right now so it's just straight on we're going to put the meat probe in and we're going to set our temperature for that for 165 for our first you know part of the cook before we take it off wrap it and then set to 202 so boy look at that that looks awesome want to try to get that probe in an area that is meat not fat because if you get it into a big fat thing it'll show a false temperature so try to get it into a meat section so let me get the phone set so now I can, on my phone, I'll set the temperature to 165. I'll confirm that. And it's already showing us that our temperature is 57 degrees right now of the meat. So it'll cook here. It's basically set it and forget it. And we already, oh, I wanted to tell you what we're using. We are using the Texas blend, of course. We're doing brisket, Texas blend. It has black oak, American hickory, and Texas mesquite that, that makes up the blend of pellets. So I uh, wanted to let you know, because people will ask. Um, you can use whatever you want, but you know, this is, uh, I, I love all those woods, so hopefully it'll, it'll make for a good flavor. Okay, so while the brisket is cooking, we always like to throw in some homemade coleslaw. And so what I've done is I took about a half a head of a large cabbage, a half a head of a purple cabbage, or some people call them red cabbage. What do you call them? I'd love to know. Is it purple or is it red? I call it purple. And uh, two large carrots. I chopped them up and mixed them up in a bowl. Big tip here, use a bigger bowl than you think you're gonna need because especially when it comes to mixing it all up, it's good to have some extra space. And we like to use these bowls because they also have a lid uh, on them for when we put them in the refrigerator. Now, for our coleslaw dressing that makes these coleslaw, uh, I used mayonnaise, apple cider vinegar, honey, uh, dry mustard and some black pepper and you know when I put this on the website I'm gonna put the whole recipe so if you're interested um, and we're just going to pour that over and mix it up toss it together then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it all come together and chill so by the time we're ready to eat. It should be good to go. And I made extra because this actually stores pretty well too for a couple days. So if we want uh, some leftovers later, we'll have it. So very easy from scratch, coleslaw. Okay, got it all tossed together. And you can see it kind of settles down into the bowl as it gets the dressing on it, but it's still better to have a bigger bowl because it was a lot easier to toss. But the top
top on it. Again, this is why we really like these melamine bowls. Uh, there's a set, they nest together, they all have tops. Make something like this really easy. This would be good for like a potluck also. We've done uh, this several times and then just stick it in the refrigerator and we'll let it sit there and come together. Okay, it's showing me 165 degrees and so and now it's giving me the alarm there on the grill itself. So I'm going to take the probe off. Look at that. Now, a tip here, you gotta resist the urge of wanting to look at it. When I put it on a little over three hours ago, I haven't lifted the lid till now. So I'm gonna take it off, and now we're gonna wrap it. This is one of our tables that, you know, we carry all the time because they break down to, you know, a little size and they're easy to carry. And we'll put a link down. We have these in our Amazon store. These are awesome. They break down smaller than, the, than your chairs that you take. So very, very convenient. I'm gonna leave myself a little place to put the probe in and then wrap the foil around it. But you wanna wrap this really, really well. Okay, I'm gonna take it over. It's not too hot for me to handle with my hands. Make me a spot here so I can put my probe back in. Now while I'm doing this, I'm gonna set my temperature and I'm gonna check my pellets too. I started with the hopper full, so I can add some right now. But let me put the probe back in. Oh, here's my phone. So on my phone, go back to my app. We're connected. I'm gonna set the temperature to 202. I'm gonna confirm. I'm seeing this temperature pretty high on this meat. So I'm gonna adjust that probe because I probably got it into a, a fatty part of the meat. So I'm gonna adjust that so we can have a more, a better temperature of the meat, not the fat. So I'll do that, but let's look at the hopper. Adjust it so you can see how many we used. I'm gonna fill it. So I got the probe uh, readjusted there, and now it's in the meaty part, and I'm getting a 
more realistic reading and it's easy to tell because I was getting readings at about 190 degrees and and obviously we were only at 165 so I, I just took it back out found another spot put it in hit a good meaty spot and now it's showing 160 some so I know I got it in not into the fatty area but into the meaty area and so now again I'm gonna set it and forget it you saw me I already set the temperature to 202 so I'm gonna trust the process and again we're set to cook at we're set to cook at 225 and and uh, you know this thing adjusts its heat pretty well and today it's been really good I mean in real windy conditions you may have some issues but we're in here in a barn and the reason why we are you know this is here where we're mooch docking and our friends have this barn and it's been raining today over the last several days and so we kind of been able to control our environment here when we get done when it's 202 we're going to take it out we're going to let it rest we'll put it in the rv on our cutting board probably and we'll let it rest for a while many people say take them out and let them rest in a cooler well we're traveling on the road we don't have a big cooler anymore so We'll just let it rest on the board, it'll be fine. Uh, keep it in the aluminum foil. We'll let it rest at least an hour. Um, and then, hopefully, we'll be eating well. Okay, so, besides coleslaw, what goes good with brisket? And that is, in my opinion, beans. Now, normally we would soak the beans all night, cook them for a long period of time, but, uh, we were out late last night. Austin and his team had a junior college baseball tournament, and so we were late getting back, so we didn't soak the beans. So we're gonna do them in the Instant Pot. Now, we've never done this before, but our friend Tony, who bought us the Instant Pot as a housewarming gift when we moved in to our RV last year, hey, Tony, said this is the way to cook beans and not even have to soak them. So we're gonna give it a try. So what we're gonna do, I've got about two and a half cups of pinto beans, dry pinto beans over here. We've already washed them, checked them out for rocks and all that. Uh, we've got some smoked ham hock from Vincic Smokehouse here in East Bernard, same place we got the brisket. We've got some uh, chopped onion, garlic, jalapeno, cilantro. We've got some diced tomatoes, some beef broth, some water and a variety of spices that I've already measured out. Everything from salt, pepper, cumin, uh, smoked paprika, uh, chili powder, and oregano. So, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get our Instant Pot going on uh, saute. And we're going to start off with just a little bit of oil just to get it going. If you're using bacon, you could start with bacon and it would release enough oil. I am gonna put, we've chopped, Tom chopped up the ham hock for me. So uh, I am gonna, you know, put, put that in here also, but I don't know how much good stuff it's actually gonna release as we're sauteing. So, going to start tossing that in. I'll save the big piece, the bone, for after we get past this stage. I'm going to put in the onion, the garlic, and the jalapeno. And when I do, when I post this recipe on the website, just like the coleslaw, I'll put all the measurements that I used uh, there. But it's like about half of a yellow onion. Uh, I think three cloves of garlic, a couple jalapenos seeded, unless you like it hot and then leave the seeds in. We're just going to saute that up and uh, then we'll check back with you. Alright, so I turned off the fan temporarily so you can hear me, but we've got everything all sauteed up. You want to take a peek in there? 
Ah, we need smell o vision. It does smell really good. This is so easy, y'all. And then we're going to put in our beans. I turned off the saute feature, by the way. We're going to put in the rest of our ham hock. Actually, I'm going to keep him out to the last thing because I want to mix in our cilantro. Our spices. Our tomatoes. Our broth. that all up and then see how much water I want to add to top it all off. Now we've got a small instant pot so uh, we'll see how this does. We uh, wanted to cook a decent sized pot of beans. Um, I think we're going to be okay but you know these things do clump up a little bit so We'll see how it goes. On the Instant Pots, there's a line that tells you do not overfill, you know, past a certain point. We have a little bit of room in there, so that's good. Let me put in our bone, good flavor there, and a little bit of water. Now on this, that reminds me, let me give you an update on our Berkey. Do you remember we bought this Berkey this past spring? and uh it has been phenomenal we are loving it y'all that big trip we had everywhere we've been we always run all of our water through the berkey and every bit is consistent we don't have any funky smells or tastes or anything floating around all of our drinking and cooking all water. of our drinking and cooking water yeah. right goes through the berkey and i love it love it love it love it so if, uh, if you don't already have one, I highly recommend you look into it. Even if you're not an RV or just for your house, maybe. Uh, it's a full-on water purification system. And um, we've been really, really happy with ours. I'll put a link in the description in case you want to get more information. But that is it for now. I'm going to put the top on it. Make sure that it's closed at the top. I'm going to put it on pressure cook for 30 minutes and then I'm going to let it do its own natural release. So it'll probably be about 45 minutes to 50 minutes by the time the uh, it's totally released. Let's see how this works out. Okay. So it's going to start coming up to uh, pressure, and we'll see what we get. So, you can hear we've reached our temperature. The phone told me 202, and obviously it's telling us 202 here as well. It's kind of going back and forth there, but it's ready. It's at 202, so I'm going to unplug that. Now I'm going to take this, take it into the RV, we're going to cover it and let it rest for an hour or two, so let's do it. put it here we were going to put it on the cutting board which we'll cut it later but Stacy needs the cutting board uh, to do some other stuff so kind of making it a lot like I said if you have a big cooler you can just put it in the cooler shut the cooler and leave it there but this will act like a cooler since we don't have room for a big cooler so we'll let that rest get our other stuff done and uh, 
Oh, I wanted to show you a, a new shutdown sequence I just learned on the grill. So let's go shut the grill down. So I was going to show you how many pellets are left right now. We just got done. And so it didn't use a lot of the other stuff. Remember, I refilled it again, but I didn't have to refill the whole hopper. I showed you how much was left in it from the start. We added, we filled it back up, and it, it really didn't use that much. We cooked for about six hours, three three uh, before we wrapped and about three after we wrapped. So the new shutdown sequence that I wasn't sure of, that handy dandy guide, quick start guide. Before I was just hitting the power button and a fan comes on and then after the fan goes off, I was unplugging. But evidently you're supposed to hit the down arrow until it gets to 150. So that's what I'm gonna do, watch. gets to 150, then you're supposed to hit it one more time, and then you're supposed to hit the power button so your fan can come on. And it's showing fan. So that's the proper shutdown sequence. So then once the fan gets done, once the fan is done, then you can unplug the grill. And that's the proper shut, shutdown sequence. So, helps to read the guide. <laughs> okay, now the brisket has rested for two hours. So, let's see what we got. Oh, that is looking good. Don't lose that juice. I oh, know. Put it on the paint on the thing. Yeah, there you go. Right there. Just pour it onto that or something. Yeah. Good on you. Okay, so let's uh, give her a try. You always cut against the grain. You can see this is going this way, so I'll cut it like this. I mean, look at that smoke ring. Wow. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding, guys. This is really good. Let me get Stacy's reaction. Hold on. doesn't get much easier. I mean, it was really easy. And this is awesome. We're going to share this with Greg and Carolyn. Have dinner. Um, we'll show you a picture of our, our plate or Stacy's plate. And then we'll come back with you after we eat dinner. Tell you about our beans and everything as well. And what Greg and Carolyn thought about the brisket. So, stay tuned. Wow, that was really good.
Yeah, I mean, to be truthful, I think it was the best brisket I've ever made. Oh, I, I think so. I it mean, was It was juicy. It was... I mean, it was delicious. Yeah, it was delicious. Greg, Greg and Carolyn loved it, um, and and the sides were really good as well. I mean, that coleslaw was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> On the beans, I think they were they had a good flavor. Um, yeah. I think I would go forty minutes. Uh, on the pot instead of 30 I think they they were a little bit firm still um, so but we're learning it was the first time we've done them in the instant pot and they still tasted good uh, but we will make that adjustment in the future yeah I think what helped with the uh, the brisket is that the uh, Green Mountain Grill keeps that temperature so steady and by not opening that up with the temperature staying steady with a stick grill it's tough to keep it steady. I mean, you can, I get up at all hours of the night. You remember when I yeah, used yeah. to do that. But it, it's tough to keep a good constant 200 to 225. Well, here, it, it stayed very close. If it got off the 225, it was only off for a few seconds and got right back to it. So I think that really paid off. It had a good smoky flavor, too. It was really yeah really good so i mean try that one salt and pepper that's all you need that's it and it was an eight and a half pound brisket i don't know if we said that i wouldn't go much bigger than that because i mean you can go bigger and you probably saw there was room in there but i think that's a good size really and that was plenty for the four of us and we still have a lot left that we haven't cut yeah yet. probably could have fed seven to eight easy yeah so if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Even if you don't, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> and please subscribe if you haven't already and join us for the adventures. Next video will be back to our travel videos. Yeah. But we also have other videos here uh, that about our cooking outside that we'll link to in the description. We'll also link to all these different things that we've talked about here in case you're interested in getting more information. But thanks so much. We always look forward to hearing from y'all. So leave us a comment and we'll see you next time. Safe travels. And happy camping. Bye. Bye.